Hey, we're Bebo, Captain Matt here. Good to see you again this evening. You know, last week we worked on this bin here and we put our bedding in getting ready for breeding. Now, let me just say this about breeding. There is very intense breeding where you can really bring out the most cocoons that you can imagine. That's where you can bring in a three week, in three weeks, this bin done properly can produce as many as 1,000 to 1,500 cocoons. Now, what I'm doing right now at this point in the season is I'm just doing rough breeding with rough soils and stuff. But I'm also allowing my worms to grow and mature because I didn't pan pick them. And so once I know my, my herd in each one of these bins is mature and we're really seeing a lot of layers, then I'm gonna go and we're gonna do it again and show you how we breed for the highest number of cocoons. And I've already begun working on a course for worm breeding. We will cover everything you need to know about worm breeding. So tonight as we do this, this is, we're breeding and we're gonna get, and we already have gotten lots of cocoons, but I'm not pushing for, you know, 1,500 cocoons in, at this period because I know my worms are not ready for that, but they will be in another, uh, probably another uh, four to five weeks. So what we'll do tonight is we're gonna set this bin up and get it ready. And then we're going to show you how we make food. And here's our setup here and how we make food for breeding worms. You know, when, we, when I feed my worms, basically it's, it's Captain Matt's worm chow and uh, some vegetables and fruits and th things like that, and that's what we feed them. But when you're breeding worms, you'll see it's an entirely different type of set of food-wise, and we're gonna get right into it. So the first thing we'll do, last week we left you with the fact that we put over, over moist soil in a bin. And then we decided, we talked about putting it on an angle. So I put, a, I put a board underneath and we got it so that the water would run off and run out of it. And if you remember, we pushed the soil back. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting a sponge in and I'm gonna remove all that excess moisture. It still leaves the soil really, really moist. And when you're doing, uh, pushing for a lot of cocoons, you're gonna want some moist soil. I, I have, I, let's call this 90% or 100% uh, moisture. I've had 60 and 70% moisture and still had them, the worms uh, giving cocoons. The more moist it is, the better the product. Here's what we're doing. We're just getting rid of this excess moisture and then we'll get the bed ready for putting worms in. And I just put a sponge in here and we've had it given this enough time now that if there happens to be any other excess moisture, it's fine. It's not too much moisture. We can handle it without any problem. So my next step is to take this and fluff it up again because it sat now for 24 hours with water on top. So I just want to lighten it up before I put the worms in. So we're all, we're lightened up. And then the next thing we'll do is get the cover ready for it. We're going to put a bubble wrap cover on first. And again, the reminder is bubble wrap facing down, two purposes. One is to hold moisture in from evaporating too quickly. The bubble uh, wrap is there to help oxygen uh, get in because you put a piece of black plastic there and it can literally lay too tight on the soil and block oxygen coming into the, um, in for the, into the bedding for the worms. So I always put another sheet of black plastic over that and I, I don't know many people that do, but I have lights on continuously and I want the worms to know they have a dark spot where there is no light whatsoever. And the next step is this, is we're going to put worms in. But because this is a test bin, I'm not actually gonna put worms in this one today. We're gonna swap it out and we're gonna put another bin here with worms in it. So we're set and we have our worms in now. And uh, these guys, they, they are, they're, and, and by the way, we put, we put 200 worms per square foot of surface, not volume. Here we have an 18 by 24, which gives us two and a half square feet. And so if each square foot gets 100, 200 worms, we'll put 500 worms in, and that's what we have in here. And these guys are starting to scoot down because of the light, and they're going to go away. 
but they're hungry. Once you put your worms in and you start, you want to start breeding, the next thing you want to do before you put them up is you want to feed them. And so I'm going to real quickly uh, show you how to make food for breeding worms. And again, this is, it's a liquid food. You can use this type of food if you wish for your other worms. But the reality is this is a, a, a food that is liquid. They love it. They'll work hard to get it. And we're going to put it in, in in an orderly fashion so that they climb over each other as they're eating it, which if they'll do that, they naturally mate. They don't have to think about mating. They just, if they touch, they mate if they possibly can. Here's our recipe. I cook these. These are uh, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes right out of the garden. And so I just cook these babies up and we're gonna put in, put three, three sweet potatoes in. Then we're gonna put in a white potato, also cooked. And so that, that is all cooked up and ready to go in. Put two of those in. These did not come from the garden. And then we're gonna put in a beet. This was one big sucker of a beet. And we're gonna, this, this is also cooked down. All this is cooked um, so that you can see it's as so soft that I can do what I'm doing here. Then uh, put a touch of water in there and get, get your uh, food processor and just turn it on and get it brewing. Now, you can do this in a blender. You can mash it up uh, yourself at home with a hand masher. Uh, there are numbers of ways of doing it, but we're going to put the food in a bag and it's gonna, we're going to use it as a pastry bag. So I'm looking to have the lumps out of it. But you don't have to use a pastry bag. You can put this stuff on it by hand in the way that we're going to show you in just a second. And so the juice I'm using is the juice I actually cooked the potatoes and the beets in. So a lot of the vitamins and stuff are still in here. We want to give them everything that we possibly can give them. All right, you can look right down here, Luke, if you can. And uh, just a touch more water. You don't want it too liquidy. But I want, it, I want enough liquid in there so that I'm getting it really moving around. And the more it moves around, the fewer chunks that we're going to be faced with. We want a real puree is what we're looking for. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a banana. Worms love sweets, and if we want them to eat up really well, um, we want to put sweets in their food. In the dry food, I always put a little um, granulated molasses. Here we're, we're going to use, because it's a liquid food, we're going to use a banana, which is loaded with sugar, and then we're going to put in some molasses because again, we are looking for these worms to get really active and eating big time so that they can crawl all over each other and do a lot of mating. Okay, so we're gonna cut that off right there. Pop this baby. And we'll just dump it all into a bowl. Okay, and the next thing to do is wash my hands is now we're gonna now we'll take the food the food's all I mean it's a wonderful blend there so now what we'll do is we'll load the bag I usually put good seven scoops in a big this is a one gallon bag very important to use a, a larger bag with double teeth um, in the Ziploc area because you're gonna put some pressure on that seam and you don't want it popping. I've had it pop a few times and ended it up with a lap full of food. Good Ziploc bag. If you're very economical with your spending uh, and you think you can get a better bag than a Ziploc bag, um, I wouldn't recommend that for this because if that seam pops, we're going to be in trouble. Okay, and now we're going to zip it up. And because of experience, we're not gonna be satisfied with that zip. So what I'll do now is get all the air out, seal it. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that that is really sealed well. Okay, so now we'll take, we'll open up the bin, get ready to feed the worms. And the way I do it is we go to a corner, just cut a very small piece. You can cut it larger if you want later, 
but I always like a small piece cut off in one corner. All right, and then I lift it up by that cut and we're now ready to feed. What we're gonna do is we're going to put two parallel lines in and we're gonna break the bin up almost into thirds and these lines will be that designation. And so now we're doing, we're just, we're decorating the cake. And you can put a little, you can try it out, put a little bit in to start with, or you may put, you know, put a little more if you'd like. Just watch it. They should eat it within four days, uh, have all that liquid consumed. So if you put too much in and four days goes by and, and half of it is still there, next time you feed, just cut back a little bit. But uh, just leave it there, the worms. Just don't feed them again until they eat it. It's like children. You don't feed the children again until they've eaten what they were already supposed to eat. We've made our wet bedding. Uh, we got that ready, we put our worms in, we fed them, and now we're gonna close it up, put our plastic cover on top, put our black on top of that. And the best thing to do is, and it's, you know, early on when you start breeding, it's very tempting to say, oh, I wanna go and see how many cocoons are in there. But if you'll just leave them alone, they'll breed better. So the best thing to do is leave them be, the only time you'll go in there is if they're out of food, then you'll feed them again. But then just put them back and leave them be. This will go in the rack. As you can see, these are all dated. Everything's dated. The date I put on the labels now is the date I'm going to uh, remove the worms and separate the worms from the bedding and the cocoon. So we're gonna date this for three weeks from today and uh, we'll know in three weeks, it will be time to separate the bedding and the cocoons from the worms. And at that point, once you do that, then you repeat the process all over again and do it as many times as you'd like. So we'll go ahead and just put this guy up on a shelf. And we're just gonna leave that for, the way I did this here, I wouldn't expect too much more than about 750 cocoons in three weeks. But in this, in this one bin, we can get that up to 1,500 as long as our worms are mature and uh, we have approximately the, the density of uh, 200 worms per square foot, uh, right moisture and right temperature, they're gonna produce. And uh, that's the way the big guys do it, the professionals do it just like this. So folks, that's it for tonight. Captain Matt signing out, God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.